Who's the genius behind these juicy, tender balls of flavor we call meatballs? How did they evolve into one of the most iconic dishes of all time? We're going to uncover the history of meatballs, and I'm going to share with you my secret recipe which make the most tender and delicious meatballs every single time. That make every Nona in the universe proud. Let's dive in. So it's hard to pinpoint the very first meatball ever made. There was likely a Neanderthal who rolled minced meat into a ball that will never get the credit he or she deserves. But the earliest recorded traces of meatballs date back to 700 BC Persia. There, they were known as kofta. The word is derived from the Persian verb to grind or to pound, signifying the preparation of ground meat. These meatballs were crafted by rolling ground lamb into substantial orange-sized balls. And the secret to their succulent flavor lay in their glaze, which was carefully crafted with ingredients like egg yolk and Saffron. The concept of kofta likely originated out of necessity and practicality. Making meatballs allowed people to utilize chopped or ground meat efficiently. By combining the ground meat with other ingredients such as spices, herbs, and flavorful glazes, they could enhance the taste of the meat and create a satisfying and substantial meal. As the Persians engaged in trade with neighboring regions, the concept of kofta became a prized culinary innovation, inspiring new recipes and tantalizing taste buds along the way, and eventually it spread to lands such as Greece, North Africa, and Spain. In Greece, they became known as keftedis, flavorful bite-sized morsels. These these Greek meatballs often feature a combination of beef and lamb, seasoned with Mediterranean herbs and spices, served in a pita bread or accompanied by the legendary tzatziki sauce, all offering a tantalizing taste of Greece. In North Africa, particularly countries like Morocco and Tunisia, they subbed out the O in kofta with an E and called their version kefta. These meatballs were a rich, aromatic creation made with ground meat and the blend of North African spices and seasonings which include cumin, coriander, cinnamon, cayenne pepper, and more. Kefta became a centerpiece in dishes like famous Moroccan tagine, which features kefta cooked in a zesty homemade shakshuka-like tomato sauce with eggs poached directly inside the sauce. Another regional favorite was the delicious Tunisian kefta sandwich, each a testament to the region's culinary ingenuity. In Spain, the influence of kofta gave rise to albondigas, typically small, succulent meatballs cooked in a savory tomato sauce. Albondigas are enjoyed in various Spanish regions, often served as tapas, which is similar to an app or hors d'oeuvres before a meal. Similarly, albondigas are also a beloved comfort food in Mexico, made with their twist of herbs and spices. I've never had a meatball taco, but these look lit. As the Roman Empire expanded, it absorbed culinary influences from various regions, including Greece and the Middle East. The Romans embraced meatballs and documented their versions in some of the earliest known cookbooks. One such cookbook is Apicius, believed to have been compiled in the 4th or 5th century by Marcus Gavius Apicius. It includes several meatball recipes featuring diverse ingredients from cuttlefish to chicken. These ancient texts provide us with the valuable insights into the early history of meatballs, showing how they were adapted and expanded upon by different cultures as they spread across regions and through time. Now venturing to the east side, we explore the intriguing journey of meatballs of Asia. In Asia, meatballs took on their own distinctive forms, reflecting the rich and diverse culinary traditions of the continent. From China to Japan, and across Southeast Asia, meatballs became a beloved dish, each with its own regional twists and flavor profiles. Chinese meatballs, often known as wanzi, are typically smaller in size and perfect for dipping. They're often deep fried, creating a delightful crispy exterior that pairs beautifully with the rich and savory flavors of pork meat. These meatballs are frequently served with a vinegar-based sweet and sour sauce, perfectly complementing the fatty goodness of the meatball. And inspired by their Chinese neighbors, Japanese meatballs known as nikudango are typically made with a combination of ground pork and beef mixed with ingredients such as minced onions, breadcrumbs, and various seasonings. Japanese meatballs are typically enjoyed in various ways, such as in soups, served on skewers as street food, or even as part of bento, which are box lunches. Look how cute they are. I had dunkaroos and gushers in my bento. They were lit too, but they are usually accompanied by a dipping sauce, which may include a mixture of ketchup and Worcestershire sauce, creating a unique fusion of flavors that's become a Japanese favorite. In Southeast Asia, particularly in Indonesia and Vietnam, meatballs gained popularity as a convenient and protein-rich street food. In Indonesia, you'll find bakso, which are Indonesian meatballs crafted from a mixture of ground beef and tapioca flour, often enjoyed in a flavorful beef broth, accompanied by noodles and vegetables. If you really want to go to Flavortown, bakso can be paired with a side of chili sauce. Meanwhile, in Vietnam, beef meatballs known as bovien make their appearance. They frequently grace noodle soups like... Sorry, I'm gonna need help with this one. Bún, rượu, cua, bún, rượu, 
Bua. Or Bun Cha, where they add a delightful meaty touch to the overall culinary experience. But we can't talk about meatballs and not include the infamous Swedish meatballs known as Kotbular in Sweden. The origins of Swedish meatballs can be traced back to the 18th century. They became widely popular during the reign of King Charles XII of Sweden, who spent some time in the Ottoman Empire and was introduced to the spiced and seasoned meatballs there. Inspired by these flavors, he brought the concept back to Sweden, where it evolved into the beloved dish we know today. These meatballs are typically smaller than their Italian American counterparts and often serve with a rich and savory brown gravy, creamy mashed potatoes, and ligonberry jam, which adds a sweet and tart contrast to the savory meatballs. These meatballs have also found international fame, thanks in part to a certain maze, aka furniture store, that offers them in their cafeterias worldwide. And we fast forward to today, meatballs are celebrated in various ways and at events around the world. Here are some few notable meatball related events and festivals. We have the Feast of San Gennaro in New York, an annual Italian American festival held in Little Italy, featuring a meatball eating contest. We have professional eaters and local enthusiasts competing to see who can eat the most meatballs. Here's a little sneak peek. In Sweden, there's a tradition of celebrating Swedish Meatball Day on August 23rd. It's a day for Swedes to enjoy traditional meatballs served with ligonberry sauce and creamy mashed potatoes. People often gather with friends and family to savor this classic Swedish comfort food. In some regions of Italy, there are meatball festivals that celebrate the local variations of meatballs. These festivals often feature live music, food vendors, and competitions for the best meatball recipe. And it was in 2017, the world's largest meatball was made in South Carolina, setting the Guinness World Record and weighing a massive 1,700 pounds and taking a year of planning mainly on how to cook this beast. Most of the meatball went to local programs to feed the hungry, so it went towards a good cause. Imagine sitting there waiting for a meal and someone pulls up with a baby elephant sized meatball. But now we bring the flavors of the past into your very own kitchen. I'm going to share with you my OG Italian based Nona approved recipe for crafting the most tender, succulent meatballs every time. Which which you can make from start to finish in just one hour. First, we're gonna grab a bowl and add in half of the ricotta cheese, about half a pound. Season with salt and pepper. Now I like to add a bit of tomato sauce in my ricotta, which is just tomatoes and salt, and a splash of cream, which gives it extra moisture and fat. You can use some kefir or milk if that's what you have. Give it all a good mix. Then add an egg and grate some Parmesan Reggiano. Mix it up again and set to the side. Now to prepare the meat, I'll season two pounds of medium ground beef with salt and pepper. Add a splash of Worcestershire sauce. I crush in a clove of garlic and I crush in my shallow. I don't want chunks of veggies in my meatballs. This is one of the secrets to tenderness. Otherwise, they steam the beef from the inside. Crush in everything. Then add some chopped parsley. Now combine together with the ricotta. This is secret number two. Gently rake in the ricotta mix into the meat mixture with your fork. You don't want to overwork it by squeezing everything in like a brute. Once you rake the cheese in, start adding some breadcrumbs. If it feels too wet, just add more. Then form it into meatballs about the size of tangerines. Heat up a touch of ghee in a pan. Sear the meatballs on each side until caramelized or until you blow a fuse. Add and some finely chopped shallot, garlic, and some hot pepper, which really lifts it to another level. Then pour in your tomato sauce, which again is just strained tomatoes and salt. You can use a can of San Marzano tomatoes here too. And for a burst of freshness, toss in some basil leaves. Now place these beauties into the oven for about 30 minutes at 375. After that, bring them out and add the remaining ricotta in the sauce, because more cheese is never a bad thing. Cook for another 15 minutes, at which point we can start boiling our water for the pasta. Now, once they've sort of cooled down, we're going to try them and rate them from one to 10. to rate these 9.5 out of 10. As promised, they are super tender. The secret to tender meatballs is in the fat. The fatter your meat, the fat from the cream, ricotta, egg, parmesan, and gently raking them into the meat will ensure these meatballs are always soft. And you don't want to have large veggies in them like chunks of carrots or onion, as this will steam the beef from the inside, making them tough. But the heat from the pepper intensifies the flavor in the sauce, and parsley adds a nice burst of freshness in the meatball. Truly easy to make, I definitely recommend you try it. You will be known as the king or queen of meatballs and Nona will be impressed forever. In conclusion, the history of meatballs is a journey through time, blending with the flavors and traditions of the regions it encountered, from the kofta of Persia to the iconic Swedish meatballs. Meatballs have become a global sensation and will likely continue to evolve in the future. As always guys, thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment, I love reading them, and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss another video. So thank you again and I'll see you guys soon.